to the second in the series on disease prevention programming. This is the crop production series and from propagation, we're going to move into the growing on phase. So when you move from propagation to the growing range, you have to go through the transplant area. In this area that the trays and the root cuttings are removed from their propagation area, they're stuck into the pots and the roots are damaged. The plants are shocked because they're moving out of a high humidity and temperature area into probably a cooler and much drier area for production. So we have to enhance the growth factors to prevent those stresses from becoming disease problems. The next step, of course, is controlling the environment, your cultural activities, which include reviewing the media porosity, the moisture levels, airflow around the plants, the temperature, and how much light you have. So far, we've talked about the water molds, and actually the water molds will affect the plants in this stage of growing as well, too. So Pythium, Phytophthora, Rhizoctonia, and Thaleviopsis are always going to be a problem here, but not as much as you're growing on the crop and it gets larger. What you're dealing with now are the foliar diseases, which include botrytis, powdery mildews, the downy mildews, and the leaf spots. Botrytis blight, known as gray mold due to the coloration of the spores that are produced on the surface of the plant. They occur in the first picture you see on leaves and geranium. The second photograph you see it on stems and begonia. The third photograph shows the flowers affected on marigolds. And then this is how it looks a little bit later on in its cycle where the tip is completely um, necrotically being removed from the plant. It's no longer producing chlorophyll and it damages the leaf tissues. So there are multiple products that work and Michigan State has produced a list of materials, the active ingredients, which are listed in the first five materials here. That's a firm, Spectra 90, Decree 50DF, 2636, and Pageant. Other materials also labeled for the control of botrytis include Protect, Spirato, Compass 3336, Heritage, and Actinovate. Downy mildews, they're not really a fungus. They're active usually in cool, moist environments, and they're focused on the surface plant parts, which are tender and not hardened off. So again, we're discussing the transition phase from propagation into the growing on area. You have tender plant material, and this is the time that you're going to see potentially downy mildew. Water is required for this to spread, and there are several different species of downy mildews. It shows up on the bottom of the leaf surfaces first. So if you're looking in this photograph series, the rubecchia, that's the underside of the leaf, you see the white uh, coloration. That's all of the downy mildew. Uh, same thing with the impatience in the second photograph. In the coreopsis, you can see some of the leaf spot there how it broadens into the upper surface area and also on coleus. This is again the upper side of the leaf and you see it working its way through the entire leaf tissue system. Downy mildew is controlled by a multitude of materials. The ones that are recommended the highest are Heritage, Camelotto, Fenstop, Adorn, Protect, and then there's Mycora, Subdue Max, Fostrol, Affirm, Pageant, Zyban, and Actinovate. All these materials are labeled for use on downy mildews. Powdery mildews, Erosyphe and Microsphera, they begin on the upper leaves when humidity is high, but the leaf surface is dry. So warm days and cool nights provide the perfect environment for its growth. Here in this case, you see hydrangea. Look at the veins on the leaf. Uh, you see the white powder formation beginning to show up. On peony, it's covered the entire leaf, as well as in roses. These two are highly susceptible. And then you have a demonstration in the last photograph of how it starts off in small spots in poinsettia, which eventually grow into larger spots and covering the entire plant. Again, luckily, there are uh, materials that are recommended for it. The main materials are eagle, torque, and tourney. All these are systemic uh, FRAC 3 classification materials. Compass 
and heritage. There are also FRAC 11 materials with systemic activity. And when you use systemic materials, you have a higher potential for disease resistance building because of the, the uh, fewer active sites where these materials work. Also included for powdery mildew are Spectro 90, Affirm, TerraGuard, Pageant, Zyban, and Camelot O. You'll notice on some of these systemics, there's a contact also included with the material, which helps prevent resistance from occurring. Combination products are good for powdery mildew. So the leaf spots we're going to talk about are Alternaria, Cercospora, and Colletrichum, or Anthracnose. And these are uh, good examples of what the disease looks like on an uh, exemplary leaf. The Alternaria in the first two photographs on top of each other, you see a defined spot with some coloration variation and some ringing appearing. Cercospora, also you have defined spots. But on Thracnose, you starts off with the defined spot, but it really moves across, usually on the margin of the leaves, on uh, especially outdoor situations. And then you see it works on the stem tissue as well. So focusing on Alternaria first, that affects many of the species that we work with, and lesions appear on the bottom side of older leaves initially, before they appear as sucken brown cores with uh, many of them having a yellow halo, but they're regular in shape. Rings are noticed on some lesions and stress plants are mostly the ones that are susceptible. So there's gotta be a stress for this thing to come in and uh, affect the plant. Cleome on the first photograph, you can see where it's a little bit further on in, in the infection process and you see masses of materials, but you can see where the initial ring circle began on some of those leaf tissues. The brassica is there. That's a very, very indicative uh, photograph of what a typical alternaria spot will look like. And uh, you see the rings there. And then the last photograph, we have zinnias. And you see on the first plant, the initial uh, uh, disease uh, infections, they're defined small and haven't started to move across the leaf yet. But the second plant they have is an older plant and you see the necrotic areas in the leaf where it's just totally basically taken the plant down. Alternaria leaf spot has multiple materials that are uh, efficacious on it. Uh, this case, 2636, Torque, Turney, and Spirato, as well as Spectro 90, Affirm, Protect DF, Pageant, Zyban and Camelot O. Again, we have a combination of systemic and contacts with some dual products in like Spectro 90, Pageant, and Zyban, combining the systemic and contact into one material. Cercospora starts off with small light green sucking spots, which enlarge and multiply, turning gray and dark as the spores are produced and mature. They may have a purplish border and can be merged together, creating an entire area of uh, necrotic uh, leaf tissue. So these are pretty exemplary of how Cercospor looks like. You see a, a lighter uh, part in the center of the circle of the infection, uh, surrounded by a darker area. And then there, in some cases, there's a little bit of a lighter colored halo around there. But the photograph of the pepper shows this very clearly, as well as the rose and the hydrangea. Materials used to control Cercospora include 2636 again, 3336, Torque, Turney, Spectro 90, Spirato, TerraGuard, Pageant, and Camelot O. So again, a good combination of systemic and contact materials to be able to rotate through your system. Anthracnose affects multiple species, both indoors and out, and they can appear as leaf curling and petiole twisting and then you see marginal necrosis over time. They're present on stems and leaves. Spots are usually small and round to begin with, which will grow and overlap, causing large areas of necrosis. In the first, first photograph, we see Euonymus. You can see the initial spots on the top leaf, and then you can see the necrotic areas on the bottom two on the right. When you look at the begonia, it the, the flower is fine, but again, you leave, see the spots in the leaves, and you start to see where those spots are joined together and some marginal burn back. 
On the cyclamen, uh, this case you have again just the early stages where the spots are still individually, although on the margin you start to see some of those spots joining together and the carotid areas beginning to show up. And Thracnose does have a, a myriad of materials that can be used, both systemic and contact in form. 2636 is a combination product, torque and turny or systemic. Pageant has contact with it as well as systemic activity. Camelot is a contact copper. Affirm is systemic. Protect is contact. And Spectra 90 combines a systemic with a contact material. And Sperato is a contact material by itself. So this is the last slide in the slide set. And there's been a lot of information we've discussed and a lot of products we've discussed. And you need to go back to look at those charts in the top five on each of those charts will give you an idea of the products that work best for that specific problem. But we talked basically about botrytis, powdery mildew, uh, downy mildew, as well as leaf spots. And these products on this page were mentioned at least for three of the problems we discussed today. Uh, so these are repeat use materials across different diseases. They include a firm, turny, and torque, which are systemic materials and two frac classifications. 2636, it has translaminar and systemic activity. Spectro 90, which is the contact systemic material. Sperato and Camelot O, both contact materials, plus pageant, which again is a systemic contact combination. You'll notice that there's a good mix of frac numbers and good idea to have these in your chemical storehouse as you need them uh, when you're growing your crop in the uh, finishing area. Again, we like to take this opportunity to thank you for listening to this and to demonstrate again that New Farm supports, supports our growers with products. As you see on this page, where six out of the uh, eight materials are produced by New Farm of the active ingredients. And uh, uh, again, we're trying to support you to, to help you do a better job and uh, to help you learn about the different materials that are available to you. Not only new farm products, but other products out there as well too. Thank you again.